I mean, as you guys know, I want our guys focused, but I, we don't try to control every aspect of their lives. So if they, if they want to watch it, great. Um, I would hope that we stick to our, our consistency and our message and our focus. I will tell you this. I, I was, you know, you people are going to say I'm, I'm full of it right now. But I was in the office, and um, Kevin Threlkill was in my office. We got done watching film, and I was in my office. And I heard this, like, explosion of noise and screaming and yelling. And I didn't know what it was. And my, my locker room, my office is right over the locker room. Well, then we figured it out. It was the managers that are down there watch, washing clothes, wa washing the, the gear from practice, the clothes from practice, and they must have watched the show and started going berserk. I, I didn't even know. Um, I'm not saying I didn't know the show was on, but I wasn't watching it and didn't know what happened at the time. Um, but yeah, I mean, we don't, we don't, if the players watch it, great. Um, that's fine. Um, but, you know, again, we're, 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 we're focused on Minnesota and, and uh, trying to find a way to be 1-0. and oh, And any energy we spend on other things takes away from that. James, you mentioned Judge Goldberg a couple times in the past week. Um, how's he come along in the second year? And considering his father was, is, does that give him a head start in the process of maturation on the college campus? I think we, we try to be careful with that because I think sometimes when these guys are five-star recruits or four-star recruits, um, that puts an unrealistic um, expectation and pressure on these guys sometimes I think sometimes who their parents are puts you know unrealistic you know uh, pressure on these guys sometimes um, he's a smart guy uh, he's a dependable guy he's an accountable guy he's hardworking he's athletic um, and he's he's gaining experience he's going to need to play well Saturday obviously being down a guy he's going to need to play well for us uh, we think he will we've been kind of gradually working him in um, I think to your point, is he probably more advanced than most guys at that stage uh, from a technique, from a fundamental, from a mentality standpoint? Yes. Um, but, you know, um, besides that, you know, I, I, I wouldn't say it, it put him that far ahead. But obviously being able to talk football with your dad, you know, being able to have some conversations and pick up some things that maybe you didn't even know you were picking up at the time, but, but you were. Um, there's value in that. Yeah, most mostly, he's just an unbelievable kid. I mean, I think he was like a 4.0 student out of high school. Uh, mom and dad are are very driven, focused people. Um, he's like beloved in Tampa and specifically at Plant High School, uh, judges. Um, and he's just going to continue to work himself into a good player and have a have a nice career here. I don't I don't think there's any doubt. James, your, uh, off, your red zone offense has been so effective that you've only attempted a couple field goals in the last four games. Do you have to do anything in practice to compensate for that to make sure the kickers stay sharp? The no, I mean, it's not like if we kick a bunch of field goals in games then we up it or lower it in practice. So, you know, we, we don't really do that. I thought yesterday was great. Um, you know, we had the offense outside and the defense inside. Um, you know, it started to rain. I came in, all the kickers, punters, and snappers were over by the bikes doing whatever they do for most of practice. And I was like, what a great opportunity to get outside in the cold, in the rain. Um, it was lightly raining and, and work on your, your wet ball drills, snap, hold, kicks. So I went out there with them. It was great work. Um, but no, it's not like we up it or, or, or decrease it based on, um, unless you get to obviously to an extreme. But, um, but no, we just kind of keep our routine, our routine. You've had pretty good first quarter success the past two games offensively. After talking about how you might have ended up being a second half team earlier in the year, it seems like you've been able to get off this a better start. What do you think the key is there? Well, I think that I, th I think the point you're getting to, I think that's going to be important Saturday. These guys are used to playing with a lead. They're used to being able to you know get a lead whether it's seven or fourteen points, and then be able to kind of eat the clock up and dominate the clock, and then get turnovers, which is a big part of their defense, which adds to you know, their, their time of possession as well. Um, you know, I think, I think however it's worked out, whether we have had the ball or whether we've had our defense on the field, um, our defense is playing lights out in the first quarter. Um, our, our offense is playing really well too. Um, but we've been able to really have good field position from our defense and from special teams to put our offense in advantageous situations. We've been really good in red zone offense. So I think that goes back to the complimentary football that we've talked about. 
the defense is setting up the offense, the special teams is setting up the offense. The offense is really setting up the defense because even the drives that we haven't scored, we've moved the ball pretty well uh, and been able to flip the field and been able to do those types of things. So, um, you know, I've been I've been pleased with that. Change your return game. Uh, you have a weapon like KJ back there, but in the Big Ten stats, at least, you're not quite where you maybe thought you would have been. What do you have to do to kind of? Well, I, I think if you look at uh, overall efficiency, offensive efficiency, defense efficiency, special teams efficiency, I think we're one of the only teams in the country that are ranked in the top ten in all three. So we're, we're playing well. Um, I think the other thing that I've noticed is, um, and, you know, and I, it, it's hard to tell this, but like as a punt returner, for example, um, we may not have the huge returns. But I think he's impacting the game. I think people are concerned about kicking it to him. So that's why they're directional kicking like crazy. There's a lot of shanks out of bounds, things like that. So we have gotten good field position. Um, you know, same thing with kickoff return. Obviously, if we could eliminate some penalties, um, we'd be in a much different, pers- you know, uh, d- much different um, you know, uh, rankings because we'd have a kickoff return for a touchdown, which really the penalty didn't impact the play. And then the same thing on the punt return. Um, Typically, people that are really good have one of those explosive plays to, to skew your stats. Uh, but overall, in efficiency, I think I think you know I think you know we're one of the few teams that are ranked in all three in the top ten in the country. James, Mike is, go ahead. Mike is still in your ear about getting a return. <coughs> yeah, Mike is in my ear about about a thousand things. <laughs> about a thousand. Are there philosophical necessities you learn when you're the head coach of a small school versus a big school that? stay with you throughout your career Uh, that seems to be one thing from a lot of small school coaches that then go to a large program is there's it seems that there's more of that that comes from those situations would you agree with that yeah i I think you know obviously there's some distinct advantages to both if you are coaching at a big school like penn state you're able to gain a bunch of information because you're surrounded with a bunch of guys with tremendous experience and tremendous background. So you just, it, all day you spend discussing and learning things because of the experience in the room. At the smaller schools, you don't have that, but you gain extreme, uh, extreme value because you're forced to wear so many different hats. You don't have the same type of support. Um, the, the GAs are literally coaching their own position because uh, you don't have that many full-time coaches and things like that. So there's value of both. There's value of being Division Two and the experience. And just as a head coach or as a position coach or as a coordinator, you have to wear so many different hats and take on so many different responsibilities. Um, I'd also make the argument to all the search firms and ADs that are out there, I think it is hard to hire a coach from a big school and send them to a smaller school because they're used to – they're used to having things, and you're not going to have them. Uh, where I think the transition from a guy, um, you know, like like PJ transition from the MAC, you know, to the Big Ten, um, all those extra things are bonuses. He's used to getting it done without. So um, I think that's one of the things that I think you have to be careful of. I've seen that mistake: is guys get frustrated because they come down a level, and they don't have the things that they're used to having. And it's, it's, it's a different world. I think it's easier to rise up than it is to drop back down. James, we're going to get to number 93 over there in a second after you. Uh, was October Blake Gilson's <coughs> best month? I don't know if you're talking about PJ. Isn't PJ Mustaver in the same number? Didn't he change 97? He probably did. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I just had, I'm going to tell you, I had PJ Mustafer in my mind, and then I turned, and that Blake Gilligan, either. that's not the image I was. <laughs> uh, October, two time Big Ten special teams player of, of, the, of the week. And, I mean, was it his best month that, that you've seen? in his best stretch? And when you combine a punter who, who's kicking the ball like that, where he needs to get it, with a defense like this, mm-hmm. how lethal of a combination? Yeah, it's a deadly combination. There's no doubt about it. I, I'm, I'm happy for him because he's earned it. Uh, he's done everything right since he stepped on campus. He's been an unbelievable teammate. He's maximized his Penn State experience. Uh, very mature, been a, been a great leader for us. Um, we've asked him to do a lot of different things. Um, so I, to see him have this success finally, he's, he's earned it. So I'm really happy for him. I think your point, combination of him 
what he's been able to do with our gunners and our snappers and our entire punt team with our defense, it's tough. When you're playing really good defense and you're having to go the long field all the time, um, you know, that, that obviously plays in our favor a great deal. So, yeah, I think, I think he's playing really confident right now. Um, I'd also make the argument I think he's going to be a better pro punter than he is a college punter because of the scheme. You know, pro can't run the spread. Their rules don't allow him to run the spread punt. I think if he can stand there and just do traditional punting and not have to worry about other things, um, I think he's probably as good as any, anybody in the country. Um, but he's been, he's been fantastic for us. So um, I, I have a lot of respect. Uh, for Blake and what he's done so far in his career. And I think you're just going to see what he's done over the last month. I think you're going to see it continue.